Can everybody's attention please? Second, Herod was disturbed all, and all Jerusalem with him. These Magi, Gentile worshippers of God, brought to the Jews, God's chosen people, the good news of the birth of the King of the Jews, their long-awaited Messiah. What great news it was! At this, the people of Jerusalem should have rejoiced, singing and dancing. Yet, how did they respond? Look at verse 3. Let's read this verse together. Let's go. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. What? They were disturbed at this good news? At the news of the Messiah's coming? These people in Jerusalem were disturbed. They were the ones who believed in the Bible. They had a worship service every week. They had a great pride as God's chosen people that rather than denying God, they would choose to die. It seemed that they had been waiting for the Messiah. But when he came, when they heard about his birth, they were all disturbed. The word disturbed suggests that at the news of his birth, they were so embarrassed and said to each other, Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> they were embarrassed. It's the same way. <laughs> Why would they so disturbed at this good news. They were disturbed because they knew how they had lived their life. Not in a manner worthy of his coming. No one knew how they had lived their life. But they themselves knew. No one condemned them. But they themselves knew that they were not qualified to meet their king because the very life they had lived thus far testified against them. At his coming, all their Bible knowledge or their faithful religious activities did not give them any confidence. What really mattered was whether they had lived their life in a manner worthy of his coming or not. <coughs> there are so many people who go to church every Sunday and talk about Jesus' second coming. But when Jesus comes again, many people will show the same response. They will be disturbed. The news of Jesus' coming will not be great and good news for them, but very terrifying news. Those who have lived their life in a manner worthy of his coming will rejoice greatly. They will rise and welcome him, singing and dancing, just like the first and second servants in the parable of the mina. But those who have not lived their life in a manner worthy of his coming will be scared and disturbed, just like these people in Jerusalem. About how we must prepare ourselves for his second coming, Jesus gives us a clear instruction saying, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to stand before the Son of God. 
at his coming, you may be able to stand before the Son of God. Saying, welcome Lord, and you dance and sing. We are waiting for Jesus' second coming. We know that once he comes, we live in his kingdom forever. This is the very hope all Christians have. We are waiting for his second coming. Then in view of this hope, we must really think about how we live our life. We must live our life as a Christians in a manner worthy of his second coming. Living a holy life, doing what God wants us to do, instead of doing whatever we feel like doing. Then we will not be disturbed when the signs of his second coming appear. Even if the world, of, world of War III occurs, we will not be shaken at all, saying, I'm ready anytime. The Apostle Peter writes, but in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Jesus also says, be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap. What was the religious leader's response? Herod summoned all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law to ask them where the Christ was to be born. They answered right at the spot, saying, In Bethlehem in Judea, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Their quotation was from Micah chapter 5. Their Bible knowledge was really great. Even without opening the Bible, they recited this prophet, prophecy in one breath, showing that they memorized the Bible. At the same time, they understood what each passage was talking about very clearly. I was really surprised when I read this passage after becoming a Christian. My question was, even if I read that passage very, 10 times, I could not see that it was uh, talking about the birthplace of the Messiah. But they knew it only because they said that, now I know. <laughs> but they knew it without the New Testament. They have really great understanding of the Bible. Now they, had a, now they heard, about, heard that the Messiah was born in Bethlehem, five miles south to Jerusalem. What great news it was. So did they say to Herod, excuse us, and then they run to Bethlehem to see Jesus, the baby? No. After this, they went home took a shower, and slept very well, as if nothing unusual had happened. Despite their great knowledge of the Bible, despite their religious positions, they had no interest in the Messiah coming. They had no concern about the fulfillment of God's prophecy either. Then we wonder, why? were they living as religious leaders? Why were they religious? Maybe they were just interested in the benefits of being religious, such as occupying high positions, receiving honor and respect. 
but they were not interested in the things of God. King Herod's response was even worse. When Herod heard about the birth of Jesus, he was disturbed. He felt that his kingship was threatened. So immediately, he decided to kill the baby Jesus, assuming that the baby Jesus was a threat to his throne. Later, when Herod learned that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he became furious. He gave orders to kill all the baby boys in Bethlehem and in its vicinity who were two years old or under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. In this way, when Herod tried to save his life, his throne, he became an enemy of God. When people love things in the world, there is no love of God in their hearts. Often, they become enemies of God. 